The Law of Equivalent Exchange by Rhiannon Blade. The able-bodied collective, in an attempt to breathe, has shoved the disabled head under the water. So now, I must step back into my role as the observer. I will chronicle your fully lived lives at my expense until there is nothing left for me to hold on to, and that timeline is growing exceedingly short. I will continue to sit untethered in a room that has become an intrinsic part of my body. The room breathes and sighs with me as my cats and I weave methodically through the house like a swarm in an ant hive, day in and day out. Only at night can I muster the courage to recall the memories of how my friends and family's laughter had echoed around me before, or even frivolous late night trips to the store with a trusted confidant because I cannot bear carrying the pain of what could be for me, but will not throughout the day. There is no amount of media in this world that I or others could consume that will relieve us of the burden of watching people indulge recklessly in their wants and wishes at the cost of ours. I would never ask another human being to wilt the way that I'm being forced to because I know the cost. I will only ever ask that people connect with their humanity and realize that freedom for all is obtainable within reason. You do not have to drown me to breathe. We can wade to the shore together. Take my hand, recognize me as a person, and realize that we both experience the human condition, and through connection and empathy, we can become one collective that speaks and moves for all. Continue to wear your mask, no matter the laws. I am still in the water. My experience as a disabled and immunocompromised person in the pandemic has been overall extremely negative. I have not only dealt with fighting with so many people in my life, as well as people not actively in my life, ruining relationships, experiencing ableism from every single person I have ever met in my life up to debating whether or not it's actually worth it to take precautions to make sure you don't accidentally kill me during the pandemic. So that'll do it. (laughs) That'll do it to you. As well as disabled people are more prone to having mental illness than the average person. And then we have been continually isolated more than any other group during the pandemic. So that has only exacerbated those things. So I think that is true for me and true for other people as well. And there's been so many movements during the pandemic that disabled people haven't been able to be a part of because of people not wearing masks, especially people wanting to fight for their own rights including people of color and people who have uteruses, especially with the draft of the Roe v. Wade being overturned, being leaked. People who are greatly affected by this, as well as people, I mean, I guess, for example, people of color and disabled people who typically would have higher risk pregnancies can't even go out and protest for their own rights because people refuse to wear masks. So it's like on every front during the pandemic, everywhere I turn, there are people in my eyes debating whether or not I'm a real person and that what they do affects me and that it's, you know, whether or not it's worth it to (laughs) make it so I can leave my house or other people as well. It's terrible. 